This video is going to walk you through how to keep a virtual checkbook based on a worksheet that I've created. I've done this, I've done this activity in the past numerous times. Typically it's done on a printed out sheet of paper with three buckets that have very professionally made popsicle sticks on them with events written with permanent marker on them. However, that's not really going to work in a virtual situation. So I have remade the entire thing to fit all on a spreadsheet. So we have Google Sheets here, as you can see, and this is the tab, this first checkbook tab. That's where you're going to mainly be working in. There's going to be other reference tabs, but this is the main tab. And the first thing that you're going to want to know is that if you ever want to read the directions on your own, I have a directions tab over here with directions on them. However, you're watching the video, so I'm going to assume that if you want to read the directions, you're going to do that at another time. The first thing that's going to happen, and this is not in the directions, this is actually an instruction that I'm going to give you, is you are going to create the first event. And this first event is not going to be profit, expense, or random, as most of the other ones will be, but this will be other. There will be no number generated, so I'm just going to put a couple dashes there so I know I didn't ignore it. And I'm going to call this Starter Cash, because everyone starts off with something in this game. Now, for this example, I need to know how much I'm going to start off with. And I'm going to put in, let's make this super easy, $999. And I'm going to put that into the profit tab because that is something that is going into the plus column. That is something that I am making. I am putting $999 into this virtual bank account. I'm not putting anything into the expense column because nothing's being changed. Nothing's being subtracted. It's only being added. And you're only going to put something in the profit or the expense column each time. So my balance right now how much is in my pretend bank account is going to be $999. Now, you're going to see three tabs down at the bottom. There is the profit tab, which has a whole bunch of events. The numbers might change a little bit based on what I adjust. You're going to, see, these are all things that you are making money in. If you vacuum, you're going to profit by $2 or you're going to make $2. Find some money on the ground. Congrats, you, you've just made $15. You don't know who to return it to. If you do something like invent pop rock gum, you might make $500. Congratulations. Then we have the next tab, which is the expense tab. The expense tab is full of things that are going to cost you money. Like get a new movie. That's going to cost you $17.99 you're going to lose $17.99. New clothing might cost you $15. If you are buying a candy bar, that might cost you 75 cents. And then, oh, some people are gonna be a little bit confused about this one, shopping with mom. You're going to lose $0. Mom's gonna cover it. Isn't she the best? Then you have the random column. The random column is full of things that might be profit, might be expense. It's going to be your job to read the event, figure out if it's profit or expense, if it's making money or losing money, and then put it in the right column. For example, if I get some popcorn, that's going to cost me money. I'm going to lose $6.50. People don't pay me to go and get popcorn and eat it. It'd be nice. If I mow the lawn, that's going to make me $5 because someone's going to pay me to do it. You might interpret some of these slightly different. Some of these are up to interpretation. It's kind of something that you need to read into and kind of see where the story takes you. And then we have the directions tab, which we're not really referencing. So the question is, how do we use this? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to a new tab, I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to type in RNG. And I'm going to type in RNG because 
I am looking for a random number generator. And <clears throat> what we're seeing right now is that the random number generator didn't pop up. That's okay. Sometimes it will. In this case, unfortunately, it didn't. So I'm going to type in random number generator. And Google is going to come up with this really cool thing. You can also go over here, go to directions, type in RNG. And Google's got this really cool tool right here. This is going to give me a random number between this number and that number. So if I want a number between 1 and 10 and I hit generate, it's going to be 5 right now. 7, 8, 6. This is essentially going to roll dice for me that has whatever numbers I want on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the virtual checkbooking and I'm going to look in the profit column. And I can see that there's nothing in number one. It goes from number two all the way down to number 36. So in my random number generator, I'm going to put in two for my minimum, 36 for my maximum. Why am I having you look and see the numbers? Because the numbers might change based on if I add some extra things later because I may still adjust the sheet. So I have from numbers two to 36, I'm going to make a profit roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and generate a number. My number is 27. So I'm going to go over to the checkbook. I'm going to put under event type profit number generated, gosh, I forget, 27. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the profit tab and that event at line number 27, gift money. How exciting. I get $10. So in the checkbook tab, I'm going to type in gift money. I got some gift money. Do you have to type in the exact event? No. Does it have to be something close? Yeah, that'd be helpful which means I'm going to make a profit of $10. How cool. So now I'm going to take 999 and I'm going to add 10. Hmm, I need to do some math here. So I better make sure I'm showing my work and I didn't set up the camera to show you how to take 999 and add 10 to it. So I apologize for that. But here I am showing my work. And it turns out now I have $1,009. How exciting. Showing your work, kids. You probably can't read that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an expense roll. So now I'm in the expense tab. Probably makes sense if I go ahead and drop this down so I know what I'm rolling first. Check the minimums. 2 to 36 are the numbers I want in that side. So I'm going to put 2 to 36. I'm going to hit generate. I'm going to hit generate after I decide is this going to be profit or expense or random because I'm not choosing the number that fits the best. I'm just rolling and seeing what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. I got the number 12. So I'm going to go over to the checkbook tab and I'm going to put in the number 12. Number 12 on the expense tab is going to be buy a book. And that's going to cost me $8.99. So I'm going to go ahead and put buy book. This does not go in the profit column. I am actually not going to be making a profit here. I am going to be losing $8.99, which means that in that expense column, I'm going to put $8.99. I am not going to be, um, excuse me, I am not going to be putting that in the profit column because, well, I'm not making anything. So when I go ahead, I write 1099.00 minus 8.99, and you can't see the work because I didn't set up the camera correctly. I apologize. But it does absolutely make sense to show your work each time. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get now one zero 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 point zero one. 
Now this is going to look a little bit different because this has a decimal after it, that does not, and it's actually going to look like that's more. If you want to, and this might already be done for you, you might have to check, you're going to highlight the columns and you're going to format, you're going to go down to, it's always when you try to show it off that you forget how to do it. Format, number, and then we're going to go into accounting. Look, now everything is just like money. Isn't that awesome? You can also do the same thing to profit and expense if you want to. It depends on if it works best for you. The last one that I'm going to do, that random tab, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to call, hey, I'm going to make a random uh, choice, another number generator, go ahead and make sure that those numbers are still 2 to 36, fantastic, go ahead and roll, and I get 22. So the random number for 22, dress down day at school. I don't get paid to dress down. I'm going to pay a dollar and don't, well, technically donate a dollar to whatever cause school is running for to dress down. However, at school, uh, in my checkbook, there's no column for donate versus pay. It's all an expense because it's something that I'm losing. So I'm going to go ahead and put that number one in there. And now you can see it's formatted like money if you so choose. And then I'm going to take $1,000 and one cent and I'm going to subtract $1. And I'm going to go ahead and show my work. And we are going to end up with $999 and one cent. Now, once you've gone through the profit, the expense, and the random, and only once you've done all three, I don't care in what order you do them, but once you've gone through all three of them, then you start over and you do another set. This is an ongoing thing. I fully expect you to continue going and going and going and going, but make sure that you're keeping up with your checkbook. Um, one other thing to consider that definitely just left my mind, but that's okay. Um, sometimes there might be something else that you're going to put in that other tab. Maybe, and this is not going to be a number generated, maybe you're going to get a fine from Ms. Kovacs. Maybe you were talking a whole lot in school and she said, you know what, take $5 off your checking account. Doesn't actually mean you're paying me $5. It does mean that you're going to lose $5. It's going in as an expense. So now it's 994.01. Or maybe you see that one of your other classmates is really low on money and you're going to be really cool about it. And you're going to donate money. Whoops. Helps if you hit the right keys. Donation to and you would name whoever the friend is. Let's say the friend is student. And maybe you're going to donate $100. So now I am at 894.01. Or maybe one of your friends is going to donate to you. Wouldn't that be cool? Now, if you donate to somebody or they donate to you, you both have to mark it. That's important. That's going to be donation from student. Students switching a lot of money around right now. And maybe Stu's going to give you that $100 back. Maybe Stu doesn't need it anymore. So I'm going to be back to 994.01. Anyways, that's how checkbooking works. Have fun.